Now, the fly I'm going to be tying is an old pattern from about the 1930s, originally tied by a, a cliff zug. This is called the zug bug. The hook I'm using, this is the full and mill, it's the all purpose medium, in this case it's a size, size 14. Now this fly is tied from size 8s to size 14s. Uh, now it's a nymph that's basically, it gives a good impression of the caddis pupa. Um, basically coming to hatch. Uh, nice pattern, it's a good old style fly. Certainly worth having a few in your box, even weighted versions uh, with a, either a bead or a, a leaded body or so. Now the thread I'm going to be using, I'm just using a, you could do a, you could be a brown thread or a black, in this case I'm using black. Now I'm, what I'm going to do here is the fibres from the, let me show you here, the mallard can be quite thick. So I'm going to leave a space there. This is where the hackle is going to be tied to. And then some of these fibres are going to be tied in. And if you look at this this fly here, it's trimmed. So they're quite bulky, just to give the impression of a, a wing case. So leave your cell enough room. Now I'm just going to take the thread down. Now I have waxed it, so plenty of grip. Obviously remove the waste. Now I'm just coming to the point where it's just starting to come round the bend. And I've got some sword tail. This is the peacock sword. You can see. Now you need about three fibres for the tail. Let's tie these in. Make sure they line up. I don't know where a couple of them are broke, so well, just check the tips that they're not, they're not broken. Yeah, they look not too bad. And then we can make sure they're kind of lined up. Now you're looking for a, a tail length round about three quarters the body. So we tie this on the top, a couple of turns just to hold, trim this the length of the body. Now for the body, uh, for the rib of the butterfly it's a, a small oval silver tinsel. It's going to catch this on the side and the body is just the peacock arrow. I'm going to at least three strands in this fly, three to four strands. Tie it in from the tip. I wanted to try and so I got a taper in it, so that's why I'm using so many. So I've got the, I'm lined up these tips slightly, then I'll trim them so they're level. Catch them in, pull them into the length of the body, and then we work our way up, nice and tight. And that point there. Now I'm going to bring the head up towards myself, which is the opposite way I wind the thread. Then when I bring the rib up, which is the normal way, meaning with the thread, the thread turns uh, are the same way that you lock in these fibres. It's much stronger. The strongest thread here is the rib. It protects the body, so that's the best way to do it. Now we wind up. Now when we counter ribbon obviously coming across the opposite way behind the thread, we go across the, in this case the peacock arrow with a turn, then I turn onto the hook again, then I turn onto the hook, so across the arrow and then onto the hook. Trim that away, wax on your thread. Now you're looking round about four to five turns, the rib up. Just this point here, I like to stroke the fibres just back. Before I bring up that half turn, catch it in. Nice and tight. And then trim this away. Now the I'm using a hen for the hackle. It's a, it's a firmness hen. It's quite dark. I'm using the dark tip one, so or the darkish one. You could use a light colour. Uh, this see I mean, you can use a kind of any like could be a light ginger or a dark ginger or a dark red. Uh, I'm sure it will still work, but in this pattern here it says furnace, so I'm going to use the furnace, the furnace end, fibre length, not too long. You tie it in by the tip because you'll find that in these, these hackles, this is a whiten uh, hen neck, a grade 2, cut, okay, just basically cut the tip, trim it and then tie it in. I'm using a hackle pliers here so my fingers are out of the way. You can see what I'm doing. Now all I'm doing is basically folding the fibres 
The good side of the feather facing towards the eye, stroking back fibres as they wind. Just work your way up. Just thread down a wee bit further, just to tidy up. Should have done that before I started winding, but anyway. Just keep going to you enough hackle. Cross your thread. Do a few turns to lock in your hackle. Trim away. Again, I'm just going to wax my thread, make sure the grip's there. Just tidy the head area up. Come back up to we cut the hackle in, and you'll see it sits reasonably well. So we've got wax again. Now we go to a lemon duck sub, which is mallard flank uh, dyed lemon duck. So I'm just going to bring out a few fibres. I mean, I'm looking for a. There's not so much the tips here because they're going to be trimmed. So enough fibres to form the thorax. You have to try and just experiment. I would expect just to see what you get away with. Now. I think it's better just to trim just now. So I'm going to trim it, you can see here, to the point where it's well marked and I'm happy with it. And then I can set this on the top. It will stay together. You want it to slightly flare on the top. So I'm looking into about halfway into the body, catch this on the top. Come in with three or four turns. Now I want to slightly spread it. Just to see how it's in. Another couple of turns in here because I did move it with my nail. I loosened off the, the thread turns by doing that. When you're happy, then you can trim away the base. Now, don't be shy with the head length in this fly. Uh, it is part of the, the fly itself. We bit wax. Now, you see the cut ends? It's a few tie on here and work you towards the eye, it keeps slipping. But if you take your thread to the eye and then build a step up of thread up on to these cut ends, it's actually much easier to, to get a nice head. Well I do and I find it easy. And there we are. And then we can put finish on the way back down. I say don't be shy with the head size. It's the part of the it's the shape of the fly. And to tie the fly without any hassle, getting too close to the eye. Uh, are too bulky. That's the best way to do it. Just, you've got to leave yourself into room. And then, some varnish. The job's finished. There we are. And that's the zug bug. You see, they're tied in lots of sizes. It's a suggestive type pattern that gives the impression of a few flies. I say, I'm just going to obviously take away the excess varnish from my needle. Got an old piece of oval tinsel line here. I'm just going to clean the eye out with that. And there you go. And that's the uh, Zug Bug. Uh, nice part. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>